Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Sharon Noble, director of the BC Coalition to Stop Smart Meters. Welcome back to the show, Sharon, and Happy New Year. Thank you, Jim, and Happy New Year to you. Sharon, you're focusing on 5G. Do people even know what 5G is? Very few do, Jim. In fact, when I am discussing 5G with people, many say, I already have it. It's on my phone. Well, I think it was probably a more than just a coincidence that the industry came out with 5G on the phones and new 5G technology. And I'd like to explain the difference. The 5G on the phones that people have right now is the frequency. It's 5 gigahertz. The old phones, older phones, are using lower frequencies, like 2.4 gigahertz. The really old phones used to use around 900 megahertz so those are the frequencies in the spectrum, like on a radio when you hear FM, 100.1 you know, FM. That's their frequency. So that's what the phones are using. 5G technology is completely different. It's a brand new generation. The first generation of cell phones and cell technology came out primarily in the 80s, and it was just a basic cell phone. Then the second generation came out, and it could do a little bit more. It could, And then the third generation, you could do te- texts. And in the fourth generation, which most people have right now, you can do streaming. The fifth generation is completely new, and it is bragging that the whole reason is that it can bring you streaming, movies, emails, whatever, faster. It can download a movie a few seconds faster. I mean, as if that's important. It's going to connect you with smart cars that drive themselves. What it's really going to be doing is connecting through smart meters, through the other wireless devices that are already out there. It's going to connect all the wireless devices to gather data into the Internet of Things. So this is their goal. And also one of their goals is you're going to have to buy all new wireless devices because the technology is so new, the current phones, the smartphones will not work with it. Something like 33 billion phones are out there. All of them will have to be replaced if people want to use the new technology. Now, people have to realize they don't need that new technology. 4G that most people are using right now will still be around and will still be functional for years to come because 5G is very, very problematic and very difficult. There are many problems with it that are slowing it down. But people need to understand that this 5G technology is coming into their neighborhoods, will come into their neighborhoods in various formats. And companies like TELUS are preparing for it now. They're putting in microcells small cell transmitters along the rights of way in most communities. They're putting them on telephone poles, on hydro poles, on tops of buildings. And even though the 5G is not ready to go to go live yet, the transmitters in this thing, as well as other transmitters, there are many antennas and transmitters in these little things that are going to be lining your street They're going to be put in every four or five homes. So instead of having big cell towers, maybe a mile or two away, you're going to have small cell towers outside your bedroom window. That's what's being planned and that's what's happening right now. And the industry is scaring people. Well, people are being scared 
by the idea of 5G, and they should. It's a scary technology. It's going to be using different types of waves. It's going to be using many, many waves that are going to be very, very active physically, and the dangers aren't even known. No one has really studied these things in depth the way they're going to be used right now. But the 4G that is active in it, we know there are 20,000 studies that show how dangerous 4G is. So people should not be complacent and think, oh, well, this is safe because it's not 5G, because that's not true. The 5G is going to be completely different technology because it's going to be using different pulses. Regardless of what frequency it's using, even some of the ones, because as I said before, there are many problems. Many of the problems are with these millimeter waves that are very, very short waves in the high frequencies like you know, 10 gigahertz, 20 gigahertz. That's not working right now. They're having many technical problems. So some of the companies are starting to use their technology with the lower frequencies that have have been used for cell phones before. But the technology itself is different. It's going to be highly pulsed. It's going to be putting much more stress on our biological systems. So we need to let people know that this is happening, and they need to start voicing their concerns because the governments aren't paying any attention. No level, whether it's the provincial, the local, or the federal government, no one in Canada or the U.S. are paying any attention. Other countries and other communities, many communities, are putting a ban on 5G, but not in Canada and in most communities in North America. There's no nothing being done. They're not even telling people it's happening. Are Russian scientists expressing concern about these new microwave frequencies? Why are Russians? Because they've been doing the test for many years. Um, Russia was one of the first countries uh, that had scientists looking at microwave radiation in the 30s and 40s. And they did experiments on humans. Um, as Barry Trower who's a British um, a scientist who worked for um, the British intelligence. If you remember the Moscow embassy kerfuffle, it was in the 60s when the Russian embassy uh, or the Russian government was microwaving the U.S. embassy in Moscow and many people there came down with different types of cancer. Barry Trower reports that Russia at that time knew different frequencies affected different parts of the body differently. For instance, the eyes and the skin are much more sensitive to higher frequencies. The uh, brain is much more sensitive to a particular frequency, the frequencies that cell phones use. Different body parts, and they were not only experimenting, on the Americans, that they were experimenting on their own people as well. And they've known for many years, much more than uh, many of the Western scientists have. And right now they're warning, they're coming out with many strong warnings about 5G technology. And they've had already quite a few conferences uh, trying to educate scientists and warn the public about it. The health has been, health studies have been done on, um, Milli waves for decades, and um, in 2012, a U.S. study that was done by the U.S. government and was classified. It was done in 1977, and it was classified until 2012. And it shows that uh, milli wave technology and milli waves are very dangerous. And this type of technology has been used by the military for crowd control. Um, they've learned that just a few seconds of exposure can burn your skin. So the, the U.S. has known about how dangerous this is for a long time, not as long as the Russians, probably not as in-depth as the Russians, but they know that this is something that shouldn't be put out there for the public. But they're doing it. They're doing it, and they're allowing uh, telecommunication companies to proliferate, and they're already using 
uh, some of the Miller Wave technology in some of the major cities in the U.S., like Chicago and New York and Los Angeles, small sections of the cities um, already have active 5G grids. They're trying to figure out exactly how best to use them because um, milli waves, short waves, have trouble penetrating. They can't tra- penetrate buildings. They can't penetrate um, bodies as efficiently. They can be disrupted by things like trees or rain. So what they've had to do is to build a brand new type of transmitter. It's a phased array antenna where they're forming very strong beams. Instead of spreading the signal out as 4G does or whatever kind of like a fan in front of the transmitter, these are being done in very, very strong single beams going directly to the device. So they have a lot of these very, very strong beams going to the cell phones, to the Wi-Fi, to the smart meter, whatever, directly. And this is what they're experimenting with now in uh, many of the U.S. cities. And perhaps in some of the Canadian cities, we don't know about it. There was a pilot project in Vancouver last year that apparently was very successful. And they say, TELUS says, that it's been terminated and they are going to continue to develop the technology. And one of the interesting things that people need to know is that in addition to all of the health issues, TELUS is partnering with Huawei, a Chinese company that has been banned in many countries because Chinese companies are governed by totally, as far as we've been told, by the Chinese government. If the Chinese government tells them that they have to um, participate, if they have to provide the data that they're gathering, if they have to turn off part of the infrastructure, if they have to do a cyber attack, they will do it because they are under the order of the government. And right now, TELUS has partnered with Huawei in not only building the microcells that they're putting outside our home, but in the grid itself. Huawei has partnered with TELUS in its pilot projects, and it's partnering with TELUS in the um, experiments that they're putting on at universities. The University of British Columbia has a 5G lab, and Huawei is partnering there. Not only is Huawei building the grid, but they're learning how our infrastructure works. So if we are going to be vulnerable to cyber attacks, which we are, which all wireless communications are, Huawei's completely aware they know how to do it. Of course, uh, the boss of Huawei said, if our phones are spying on you, we dare you to find the chips in it that are doing it. And I thought, well, they're so cleverly hidden, they can challenge you to do it. Yep. And they're pro- we don't know. I don't know who's building all the chips for all the smart devices, the smart stoves the smart doorbells, the smart whatever, everything that's smart has a chip in it. And these chips are capable in many instances like Alexa and all this stuff where you say you talk to your television, the television is listening to you. It has to in order to be able to respond. It's also got a camera in it because many televisions, for instance, respond to someone waving their hand. This can only be done if the uh, microphone and if the camera are activated. And many of these smart devices um, have in their warranty that the warranty is invalid if the smart device is, uh, if the microchips are disabled. They want to be able to gather data. And this is part of the entire raison d'etre for 5G, it's going to be connecting all of the wireless devices, getting data from everything, and sending it into the Internet of Things through the Ethernet. And here we are. This answers why we have smart meters. Smart meters are critical to the smart to the 5G grid because the devices that are are in our home. All of the many new smart devices that are coming with these chips 
will be speaking to the smart meter's chip. And the smart meter's chip will be sending it off through the 5G grid to the marketing companies, to China, wherever. We will lose control. We won't know where it goes because it's going to go into the cloud. And we will have our privacy and our cybersecurity threatened. It, and many, and I don't know if this is true, but many conspiracy theorists believe it's going to be contributing to surveillance through cameras on the streets, through um, Wi-Fi systems on the streets. You know, for instance, in, in the UK, one way they found what some of the terrorists is they, they tracked them as they walked down the street through all of the cameras. And this is surveillance. And many people object to being surveyed all this time at every moment of the day. And many believe this is another reason for 5G. Mm -hmm. uh, a friend that just visited China a short while ago said he couldn't rent a phone there unless uh, he submitted to facial recognition uh, photographs first. And they were embedded in the telephone. Well, look at it is right now, many of the airports you go through, you do your, they scan your picture. You know, as you're, you're entering from the, another country, they've got a camera right there at the passport site. And then when you go through customs, you know, they look at the picture. We went to Cuba a couple of years ago, and they have a facial recognition camera. And you had to look at it, and they looked at, you know, checked through whatever passport thing they had to compare the facial uh, features. Yeah, I think it's it's certainly coming, and it's something that many people object to. And if people object to it, they better start objecting to 5G, because this is coming. We'll have more with Sharon Noble right after this. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Writers, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sharon Noble. Sharon, you've already talked to scientists and had them uh, do presentations in BC about uh, the health hazards of 5G. Who's the doctor and what's their big concern? It was Dr. Martin Paul. Um, he spoke at several communities here in British Columbia. And we also brought uh, Dr. Uh, Timothy Sheckley, who is um, a strong advocate for having everything wired and he is proposing that there are many benefits to having everything wired through fiber optic cable. Now, TELUS needs fiber optic cable, and they're bringing it into everyone's community, and they're saying, we're giving you free fiber optic cable. What they're doing is they are laying the groundwork for the 5G microcells, which need fiber optic cable because it's so fast. It brings data to the transmitter so very quickly. The last step, the final step, will be wireless into your home. Timothy Sheckley is saying what we should be looking at is fiber optic cable to and through your home. Get rid of all the wireless devices. Fiber optic cable is faster. It's far more efficient because it can carry much more data than wireless. It's more secure. It's much harder to hack. And it doesn't irradiate people. Also, in the long run, it's it's uh, less expensive. You don't have to constantly be, you know, upgrading cell towers or if they're damaged in storms, fixing them. Fiber optic cable can be put underground and work just brilliantly. He's also suggesting what, in his opinion, what should be done is what's happening in some communities in Colorado where he lives. 
of Loveland, for instance, owns their own uh, fiber optic network. They own it. They own the internet connections. They own all the cellular work, all the data, everything that's coming through there. And the community pays for it. So instead of paying, you know, maybe a hundred bucks a month for your internet through to Shaw or to Telus, you pay thirty bucks to the community to get even better internet service. And so this is what um, Dr. Sheckley was was promoting um, in conjunction with Martin Paul, Dr. Paul's discussion about the health effects. There are so many studies showing that microwave radiation, which is the 4G and could be part of 5G, the health effects are indisputable. They range from, as you know, from having sleep disturbances because of reduced melatonin production to neurological problems and depression to um, reduced fertility, which is a major issue. Men carrying phones in their pockets, their sperm are um, less virile. They don't travel as quickly. They have defects that have been linked with autism, uh, women's eggs, um, children's, you know, females carry their eggs from the time they're born, and exposure to laptops and cell phones damage those eggs, and um, it leads to DNA damage. It leads to DNA damage to adults. The cell walls are damaged, leading to DNA damage. It leads to cancer. There are so many things that have been contributed and associated uh, with microwave radiation. And we know that 5G has not been studied as well. In fact, many scientists are saying it hasn't been studied at all. But there are some studies, like the 1977 study from the U.S. Air Force and like some studies from Russia that go back to the 60s, that show that not only does it go through the skin, many of the studies are concerned about the fact that because these milli waves do not penetrate well, they damage the skin and the eyes and the testes, which are all very superficial. They are easily penetrated. But many studies are now showing that, for instance, the sweat glands act as antenna and the radiation gets in the body through the sweat glands and damage has been demonstrated, has been reported to internal organs like the liver and kidneys. So there are studies that show that there are dangers and just because we don't have a lot of them doesn't mean we should ignore it. Is it suspected that uh, microwave radiation might have caused Gordon Downey's brain cancer? He liked to use a wireless headset while he was singing uh, with the tragically hip. Yeah, the glioblastomas have been studied for quite a few years. And uh, Dr. Halberg, for instance, in, in Sweden has done many studies. And the National Toxicology Program and the Ramazzini show have shown that Prolonged exposure to even low levels of microwave radiation can cause brain tumors, and glioblastoma is the most deadly. And before cell phones became popular, glioblastomas were extremely rare. Now they aren't. In fact, they're increasing. I mean, they're rare in in, in comparison to things like uh, lung cancer because people are still smoking or exposed to smoke. And um, to bladder cancers, for instance, that are um, caused in main part from exposure to pesticides and chemicals, but the incidence of brain tumors are increasing. And glioblastomas are basically death sentences. The life expectancy is very, very short when someone has a glioblastoma. We'll have more with Sharon Noble right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the 2019 drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. 
Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sharon Noble. Sharon, what can people do if they're concerned about the the huge uh, push to bring in 5G? As I've said about smart meters, but we have to do it even more strongly, we need to get our voices heard. The government is absolutely ignoring us, and people have to start complaining about this because they're not going to have a choice pretty soon. They're going to lose their health. They're going to lose their privacy. They're going to have cybersecurity attacks on our infrastructure. And the benefits that are being bragged about, that TELUS will tell you about, that everyone is telling you about, really don't exist. They're minuscule. A few seconds downloading a movie, is it really worth all of this? The benefits are to the corporations because they're going to be getting our data. That's where the benefits are. And the people need to start getting connected with groups. There are groups growing all over the world who are fighting this. And there's going to be an international ban 5G day. This is the 3rd or 4th on January 25th. And I'm encouraging everyone to get out there even if there are only three or four of you, get out there with your signs. You can get out there. You can Google, for instance, 5G crisis or ban 5G international. Google some of these sites, Americans for Responsible Technology. You can see that there are scientists, hundreds of scientists, who are petitioning the U.N., and petitioning the World Health Organization to stop this insanity now. But they need our voices behind them. Until we make our voices heard, the industry has no reason to stop it. TELUS has no reason. They'll keep on doing it because they're making money. We we are going to be protesting in Victoria on January 25th. And I'm hoping that every community whether it's a small community or a large community, get out there. Put your signs over the overpasses. Stand along major roads. Get some flyers printed and take them to libraries. Small things to start raising awareness. That's the most we can do right now, Jim. Whereabouts in Victoria? Right now, what I'm planning, and I'm hoping there are going to be others, um, we're going to have overpass coverage. We're uh, going to have banners and people protesting on an overpass at the exit to General Hospital off the Highway 1, Trans-Canada Highway 1. And I believe we haven't determined a time yet, but I believe it's going to be from noon till 2 in the afternoon. More will be up in my updates or on our website, which is www.stopsmartmetersbc.com. And as more communities um, plan their activities or events, please let me know. And my email address is citizens for safer tech, T E C H, at shaw.ca. Let me know what your community is planning, and I will put it on our website. We have to join together, or it's not, it's not going to happen. Sharon, thank you so much for chatting with us. I thank you very much, Jim. And once again, the website's... www.stopsmartmetersbc.com Thanks again, and Happy New Year. Thank you, Jim. Same to you. My guest has been Sharon Noble, Director of the BC Coalition to Stop Smart Meters. If you have any questions for Sharon or any of her other guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at Talk Digital Net. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated. 